Ladies and gentlemen, dear Paul, it's my great pleasure to welcome and to introduce you to the first and probably final symposium on occasion of the farewell of Paul Heuning Hühner from Hanover. My name is Simon Lose, and I seem to qualify for this introduction as I am Paul's research assistant, and more to the point, I am partly responsible for organizing this event. Put yourself in my shoes. You're Paul's research assistant, and you realize three things. First, Paul is about to retire. Second, you're his research assistant, so you should probably you know, organize something in his honor, right? And third, you know for a fact that Paul hates any kind of academic adulation, such as Festschriften or pseudo-conferences, where everybody is supposed to praise the deep insights and merits of one's philosophy, <laughs> right? So what do you do? Well, I consulted with a few colleagues and friends, namely Helmut Haidt, there. Um, next, Markus Scholz and Thomas Reidon. Uh, okay, winkers, right? And we decided to secretly plot and organize a symposium on general philosophy of science in Paul's honor, where at least half of the speakers would be fundamentally opposed to Paul's main philosophical views. <laughs> to quote from the invitation Helmut sent to today's speakers, we know that Paul doesn't like adulation, but he certainly likes meeting some of his academic friends for a substantial, if not competitive, intellectual engagement, plus some good wine afterwards. As the program shows, we managed to involve some of the most distinguished philosophers of science from three continents, who also happen to be among Paul's highly regarded academic friends and who will be crucial for realizing today's main aim for this symposium, that is, a competitive and intellectual debate within philosophy of science. When we finally arranged for Paul to run into the poster advertising today's speakers and with a little sticky note saying, any plans for this date, um, we witnessed one of the rare occasions where Paul actually was speechless for a moment, one might even say stunned, and that alone seemed to be worth the trouble in our opinion. <laughs> Naturally, Helmut, Thomas, Marx and myself had quite a lot of help in organizing this conference. We especially would like to thank Brigitta Bräunig, Uliana Feest, Nils Heinrich, Nils Hoppe, Dietmar Hübner, Maike Kleihauer, Coco Quister, Leon Schäfer, Tobias Schönwitz, Marcel Weber, Thorsten Wilhold, and last but not least, Ursula heuning süß who turned out to be a fantastic co-conspirer, as Paul <laughs> maybe tell you later. Now, let me give a very brief overview of the program, it's on there also, uh, that made Paul speechless, with pleasure we assume, that is. After this introduction, Professor Barke, president of Leibniz University, will give a welcome speech, followed by a laudation by someone to be revealed shortly. This is another part of our secret plot. <laughs> then afterwards, there are philosophy students who will present their impressions of Paul Heuning as a teacher. This, I guess, is part of the student's secret plot, basically. Then we'll have two talks, that is 40 minutes talk and 20 minutes discussion by Martin Kaye and Hazard Chang, followed by a coffee break. This seems to be important. There also will be water. You don't have to drink uh, coffee. And then we have two further talks by Howard Sankey and Richard Boyd. And the respective chairs will introduce the speakers more appropriately when you know, the talk is on. The symposium will end with some closing remarks and a reception in the Hannah Arendt Saal. This is in the basement below, not upstairs, in the basement. And all of you are gladly invited to join us for a glass of wine and to honor the proper meaning of the word symposium, basically. Before concluding this introduction, let me embrace the opportunity to personally thank you, Paul, for being a great and inspiring sometimes and even supportive and rigorous philosophy teacher. Rigorous is a part of it also. <laughs> Reflecting on the most important things I've learned from you related to philosophy, at least, there are four implicit commandments that come to my mind. First, be as self-critical as possible. Second, be as clear as possible. Third, don't commit yourself to any philosophical doctrines or you might actually lose some IQ points. Fourth, don't ever put a word, say, truth in distancing quotation marks without explicitly stating what you actually mean by this. <laughs> or else. 
thank you for this and your constant encouragement and thank all of you for your attention. Thank you. <laughs>